Hi, thanks so much for being here. So today I'm going to talk about the books that my daughter and I read the month of June. So I read one, two, three, four, five, six, seven books this month. And my reading slump has finally ended because I discovered a new author this month that I'm so excited about. And I'm going to show you guys. But first, the first book I have that I read this month is How to Overcome Your Childhood. It is nonfiction. It is by the School of Life. The School of Life makes, creates, publishes all of these like mental health type, like psychology type books. A lot of their books have like, this one doesn't, but a lot of their books have like illustrations, which make them a little bit more interesting for me personally as someone who likes to read about mental health and psychology. This one doesn't have illustrations, but this one's a very short book. And it is about how to overcome your childhood. Now, you know, I knew that this book would be super short because I, you know, I viewed it online, but I just kind of wanted to read it anyway. I had a very traumatic childhood and I am personally in therapy. I'm a big advocate of therapy and not having, you know, like I don't like to ever hide that I'm in therapy. I love having a psychologist and she has helped me a lot. And I'm always reading about mental health. And so I would say like this book didn't really add a lot it, it to compared to all the books I already read. It was a, just a very very short read which I like I said I knew, but I did get some things out of it. And it is just what it says, you know, it basically it kind of like suggests to basically go to psychotherapy. And I don't really think it had a lot it had a lot to me as a reader a little bit more about like childhood like why things are like why things could possibly be the way they are in your childhood but it didn't really to me have like a lot of like what the title says which is like how to overcome your childhood which is a very hard thing to do but like so I don't really know who I would suggest this book to yeah so but like there were things I really enjoyed about it. Like it says, it's a huge psychological achievement to accept other humans in their bewildering mixture of good and bad, their capacity to assist us and to frustrate us, their kindness and meanness, and to see that for more that than we're inclined to imagine in our furious or ecstatic moments. Most people belong in that slightly sobering, slightly hopeful gray area that goes by the term good enough. So... Yeah, and, you know, I like how, I like that paragraph because, like, it's hard when you come from a place with trauma to deal with different personality types and things like that. And kind of, like, for me personally, like, the the way I've, like, managed people is, like, sometimes I kind of am kind of a black and white thinker when it comes to dealing with people. And, like, sometimes I have very high expectations for people because I had so many, like, bad eggs, if you want to call it that, that I've had to deal with. So, but, like so so many horrific people that I've had to deal with in my childhood so it's sometimes like it, it helped it helped to read that that some sometimes people are good enough not everyone's perfect and things like that and so it has little like tidbits in here about like you know communication and relationships and like you know why you know things about our childhood you know, it's a very hard book to describe because it's so short. So yeah, I don't, I don't, I liked it. I didn't love it. I, I do, I did really like a lot of their other books a little bit more. Like I've shared those in some other videos, but they have a lot of really great books. This just wasn't the favorite one I've read so far. So the next book is a middle grade fiction. It is by Lynn Janelle, Jonelle, Emmy and the Incredible Shrinking Rat. So I discovered this book on the channel called The Learning Ladder. And so I, as an adult, like to read middle grade. I thought it sounded, look, it's cool. Look, the illustration, the rat, like it moves. I forgot what those are called. Where each page it moves. I forgot the exact word of what those are called. Basically, it's about this girl named Amy and this rat. And basically, you know, the rat talks. And it's kind of like an adventure story and kind of like a mystery a little bit. And it is very much middle grade. And when I say that, I mean, like, I came, I ended it with thinking, I think a lot of, like, 
I don't know, I'd say like fourth, fifth grade age group, maybe sixth, would probably enjoy this book, maybe even third grade. So it definitely, like, I really love the beginning, and then it kind of like, I don't know if I want to use the word silly, but it kind of like some of the things that started to happen towards the end, it just wasn't like believable for me as an adult reader or just like someone who, it's not that it wasn't believable. It's just, it has like some magical elements to it, which I, I, I did like those. I just felt like it kind of got off track for me. I still liked it. Believe me, I would not have finished this book if I didn't like it. I DNF, I'm a huge DNFer. And so I, I definitely liked it, but I didn't love it. And it's very, the plot, the plot is very quirky about, you know, this girl talking to a rat. Like the rat, it's just, it's very, it's almost like fancy-ish. Like it has, it's almost hard to describe the thing she gets into with this rap, that rat. There's like a lab that's involved in like this magical lab with these like creatures who have all these different powers. And it's like certain animals have like certain powers or certain rats. And you find out like, like that can do things to humans. So a lot of these little creatures have like these different like spells or whatever that you can cast on people. <laughs> Um, so it's like very intricate kind of like in like complexity of like the things it gets into and I think I kind of would have preferred it a little bit more simple story about the girl and the rat. I thought it was gonna be more like kind of like realistic fiction. No, it was not that at all. It was way like, I don't know, like I said, kids who really like magical things and like adventure kind of, I don't know if you call it adventure, like it's very like it was almost just like too many layers for me and like it kind of got I, I felt like the writing kind of got lost because I really liked the writing in the beginning I don't it's a very hard book for me to describe yeah okay this is a reread for me of a short little cute classic called My Father's Dragon by Ruth Stiles Gannett Gannett okay so this book my daughter and I read it as a read aloud many many years ago and I don't know I just picked it back up it was so cute it was such a good story about this little boy who is going to rescue this dragon and yeah Elmer is his name and I was it's just really it's just a really sweet short little book about him going to rescue this dragon and encountering all these different animals along the way and it's pretty much that it's a simple story of a journey and a task that he wants to complete of rescuing this dragon and i was happy to find out which i didn't know before that there is other books it's like a series or a trilogy this book is literally falling apart you guys like it look it's like i got it at a thrift shop years ago but i realized that they have other books in the series so next time i go to half rice books i'm going to see if they have i think you can get the trilogy in one book and i'm going to replace this one that's falling apart so this book is, this is the author I was telling you about that removed my reading slump. I have been a reading slump the past few months in the sense that I've just been reading books, but like DNF and so much and just like not really like, gr nothing's been grabbing me from the first page. And that's how I like to read books. I realized that some great novels it takes a while to get into. That's personally how I felt with how I feel with a lot of classics. Like I feel like sometimes I don't like getting into them right away and it's, and it's worth it. But when it comes to modern fiction, I like to be there from the beginning. I like to just be in it like, oh my gosh, like I don't want to put this book down. Those end up being my like top favorite books. So even though I really like realistic fiction, I really also enjoy like fairy tale type books. This book these books remind me of this like kind of like magical world of Sophie Anderson created fairy tale-ish and this is a character these characters in this book the house of chicken legs so uh the main the so basically the main character is 12 year old named Marinka and she and I, I said it's Milgrave fiction right yeah and so she lives in this house with chicken legs, which is, of course, so unique and such a fancy. Now, I talked about this before. I wanted to mention, if you if you did watch that other video, that I said I put, I wanted to DNF it because I was scared. Because, let me tell you why. The house with chicken legs is a house 
where a person called Yaga lives in, who is a guardian, which is a Marinka's grandmother, who is a guardian who guides the dead into the afterlife. So that's a little spooky for me. I don't like reading about dead people. So I did put it down because I thought it was scary. And now it did kind of have like spooky vibes. Not scary. Not scary. But I say the word spooky because I'm short of words. But I, I'm short of words to describe what I'm trying to describe. But the word, just the word death and dead, I don't like reading about it at all. Even if like a ghost isn't scary, it's like, okay, it's a ghost and it freaks me out. So this book, because it deals with a guardian who guides the dead, um, I thought I put it down, but then I picked it back up. So basically this girl who is supposed to take over she's supposed to take over and be a guardian when her grandmother stops being a guardian and so she doesn't want that and that's that's what kept me reading and stuff like that she she wants to it's kind of like the little mermaid like ariel like she wants to like live among the people she wants to like live among the living she wants to because since she's a guardian of the dead she has to pretty much stay in her house and her house because it has chicken legs it moves so her house is very like very imaginative because her house moves because it has chicken legs it moves because it goes to different parts of like the world to have these people who are like lost like kind of like lost souls people that are dead find the house and it explains everything though like the book explains everything. It makes more sense when you read it. Like, I'm probably badly, poorly explaining it. But basically, she's supposed to take over as a guardian to leave the dead. Basically, just the, all the guardian does is, like, give the, the dead people a little, like, a last meal and a place to kind of talk about their life. And then they kind of go on to this, like, afterlife. And so it's a very short process. So it wasn't really scary or anything like that. It was actually kind of peaceful. But I just don't like reading about dead people. <laughs> but... I stuck in there and I really loved it. Look at the um the end pages is like the chicken, like the texture of like a chicken leg, <laughs> chicken skin. Okay. So the house is like a character in itself. The girl's the main character, Marinka, and then her grandmother who's a guardian. So it's just like a sweet little like I don't know, I guess I'll use the word coming of age story about this girl. Now, they definitely have some things that also happened in this book that kind of like shocked me. It was not not like shocking, but we're surprising in a good way. Kind of like you find out about Marinka and about her life and about this guardian and like her life and things like that. And so then the whole point of the book like is like her exploring. Does she want to be a guardian? Like like balancing the life of like living people versus like the dead people and stuff like that. Like it's just it's very quirky and interesting. I really liked it. I really love her writing. She was like a, a really interesting way of using words. And even though this is middle grade fiction, I think many, many, many adults would also love it. And I think it, this book, I think, would make um, a really good middle grade fiction for for readers who like a little bit of magic and a little bit of like light magic, but then like kind of realistic, like it's kind of like in between. That's why I really liked it. Okay, then it led me to this book which is sophie anderson the girl who speaks bear so if you watch my mid-year favorites video i apologize some of these books will be redundant because three of my favorite mid-year favorites ended up being books i read in june so this was one of my ultimate favorites i've ever read mid-year favorites too by the same author now this book weaves the two worlds. I would say that it's like companion novels, but yet two totally separate like characters and things like that. But it has a map at the beginning of this book and it shows the house with chicken legs. So I would recommend if you're starting with Sophie Anderson, if dead people don't scare you, if, if this is not spooky for you or you're a young reader, start with this one. Because even though it's not like a sequel, they connect. And I and so I think you should start with this one, but you don't have to read this one to read this one. So this is about a girl named Yanka who is part bear. She turns, she turns, she this isn't spoil anything because it says it. She grows bear legs and she is found in a bear cave when she's a baby. She's raised by this woman. She's like an orphan, kind of, kind of. She's like kind of like an orphan raised by this woman 
who this really nice woman who raises her, but she doesn't know any of her history. So it has that story, which I love stories like that. Coming of age, orphans, like f origin of family, like not knowing like where you came from and like the mysteries that come with that. Plus, this has a fairy tale type elements to it. It's like light, light, light magic-ish type, very much fairy tale. And that's the type of magic and fancy stuff that I like. I like kind of like really light magic and fancy where it's like weaved in between like realistic fiction and things like that. So I also liked how the author creates these worlds where these two like books are connected kind of. I'm so excited to read more of her work. So this book, I really, really, really loved it. I gave it five stars times a million if I was giving it more than five stars. Like I really, really, really loved it. I really love her writing. I was like in it from the beginning. The first page got me. It's so enchanting. Loved it. Loved it. Okay. So the next one is a nonfiction book. And this one, again, I showed in my mid-year favorites. I'm not sure which video is going to come out first. But either way, this is one of my favorite books I've read so far in 2024. And this is The Healing Power of Tears, The Art of Crying by Pepita Sandwich. It's just a nonfiction book. And it's kind of a memoir. Not really a memoir, but it's an illustrated graphic novel type book but it's nonfiction, and it's all about like i'm called the art of crying yeah like the art yeah, it is art of, pff, the art of crying literally and the reasons why we you know like why we cry like how we express our emotions in different ways and like the importance of tears and i also really like how she talked about like movies to watch when you need a good cry I, it's interesting that she included one of my favorite movies of all time, which is You've Got Mail. Now, You've Got Mail does not make me cry personally, because I think that's very personal to each person, but it's a very, very, like, sweet, well-meaning. I always watch it around Christmas. It has, like, one Christmas scene in it, but it's not, like, a Christmas movie, but I like watching it in the fall around Christmas, but I, like, you know... Oh gosh, Dancer in the Dark. That's one of the like saddest, most depressing movies I've ever seen in my entire life. I've seen it once and never again. It's by Lars von Trier. Oh my gosh, that's a depressing movie, you guys. It's so good, but so depressing. But anyway, so, and she also talks about like songs and like, I'm, I'm making a whole video about crying. So I'm going to talk about the movies that make me cry. And I'm going to probably talk, I'm going to show this book again. If the same people watch that video, then thank you. Okay, so uh, crying is very cathartic for me. And it always makes me feel better. She talks about that in this book. About how, you know, like the chemicals release when you cry. It's definitely one of those books you can just grab and flip through. The illustrations are really cool. Like flip through multiple times. She also talks about this. Um, this teacher who is considered a tears teacher in japan his name is h-i-d-e-f-u-m-i -E last name y-o-s-h-i-d-a he's a self-described tear teacher who travels across japan to encourage adults to cry and i thought that was really interesting she has all these like little tidbits and how he you know he, all these things about psychology that support you know how crying is helpful so yeah, it's all about that, expressing your emotions and healing through tears. Okay, so this is another book that if you watch both videos, you will see twice. But this is Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. I reread it in the month of June after about 20 years of not, not reading it from college. And it in, I included it in my mid-year, it is a mid-year favorite also because... I really got way more out of it reading it in my 40s versus reading it in my 20s. You know, I read it for college and I learned so much about Jane Austen as a writer, how she really, she really is such good at character development in this novel. I really loved it, like learning about all the different characters and kind of like studying them like as a reader, as like the psychology of why they did what they did and the decisions that they made in the book that I thought I thought it was like way deeper than the first time I read it, what I got out of it. And of course, it's, you know, a lot about Mr. Darcy and Elizabeth, but 
it's also a much about like all the different character personality types in her in their friend circle and family on to my daughter's reads from june okay you guys so before i start with her reads i want to tell you guys about something so uh, we went to barnes and noble and i'm not sure if every barnes and noble is doing this but the one we went to gave us this paper was at the cash register and it said barnes and noble escape into summer reading so basically it says read any eight books this summer and record them in the summer reading journal and then you bring this back between July 1st and August 31st, 2024, and you can choose your free reading adventure from the books listed below. So for each grade, it has like different books you can get for free. So we've kind of already gone through this list and my daughter, the one she wants is called The Mystery of Black Hollow Lane uh, by Julia Nobel, which we never heard of this book. And a lot of these books my daughter already read or she DNF'd or she wasn't interested in, we looked them up. And so, yeah, so I thought that was very interesting that we're going to, she's going to be, she's going to get a free book. So I didn't even know about this until we went to Barnes Noble. So I just wanted to show you guys, maybe if you're interested, you can look this up at your local store. Okay, so now the book she read. So she read one, two, three, four, five, six books. Actually, she read five books and this is what she's currently reading. So she's currently reading The House of Hades by Rick Riordan. This is a Heroes of Olympus book four. So this is just like a, you know, she loves a Rick Riordan. Oh my gosh. And this is just another one of his series of mythology. She's currently reading that. And then this is Nine from the Nine Worlds. Again, Rick Riordan. This is from the Magnus Chase series and the Gods of Asgard. I believe this is like a companion novel, I mean, a companion book or something like that. That Oh, it has some illustrations that goes with the series, the gods, the gods of Asgard. So this is Norse mythology. She loves mythology. Okay, so she read that. And then more Rick Riordan, you guys. Oh my gosh, she's on a Rick Riordan reading spree. So three more by Rick Riordan. Let's see. I have to constantly check the series because... So this is book two in this, um, the Heroes of Olympus middle grade fiction Greek mythology series. And this is a different series. This is Percy Jackson and the Olympians, Rick Riordan, book five, The Last Olympian. So she's making her way through all of these different series by Rick Riordan, which are mostly Greek mythology. And she loves them. And then this is another series she is reading. I had to like look at this. I was like, is this the same? I was like, wait, I thought I already showed that book. <laughs> no, this is book three. So yeah, she just finished book three. She's on the book four. This is The Heroes of Olympus book three by Rick Riordan, The Mark of Athena. So I'm not sure if this is YA or middle grade, but she really loves Greek mythology, you guys. She really loved, I really, you know, before she read Rick Riordan, I just knew, I just knew that she would love Rick Riordan, and he's pretty much become her, her, like, author of 2024, so she really loves him. Now, this book, we, I showed, I believe, in a haul, I got it from bookoutlet.com, but this is a world full of spooky stories, 50 tales to make your spine tingle, written by An Angela McAllister. So we collect this series and I asked her if she wanted to put it aside for Halloween, but she said no. And that was totally cool with me. So she read it this summer. And it is like, it is, you know, what it says. It's like tales from around the world. And I like how it tells you like the origin, like where it's from. Japan, Brazil, Australia, India, Canada, Wales, France, China, all the different places of where the story originated from. It has really awesome illustrations. Hansel and Gretel, a story from Germany, Europe. It tells you, like, yeah. So she really loved it. She read this, like, really quickly, like, in a couple days or a few days. And she really loves folklore and stories and things like that. So I'm going to put this aside, and I'm going to probably pop it out the month of October. 
And not that you have to read it in October because it's not like technically Halloween. It just says spooky stories. But Hansel and Gretel, of course, is a classic. You could read anytime a lot of these. But, you know, because it kind of has that theme to it, I think I'm going to break it out again the month of October. And maybe we'll pick, she'll, I'll have her show me, reread her favorite one out loud or something like that. Or we'll read them together. But yeah, so um, that is everything that I read and she read the month of June. And I have a video coming up. I'm going to show you guys my TBR card. I didn't show you guys what I'm currently reading because I'm actually in between books right now because I just finished um, all of those books. So I haven't even picked anything. But I have some things in my cart. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a video if you're interested. I'll probably do that next of like my TBR cart for the rest of the summer. Thank you guys for being here. Thanks so much. Bye.